Everybody, everybody, gather around. The Savior is born in Bethlehem. I was just on my way to go see him. <gasps> can I come with you? Of course you can. Do you guys want to go too? All right. What are we going to do on our way? Well, I think we should read our Bible story just to catch up on our scripture. Mm -hmm. Then I think we should play a game because that's super fun. Mm. And then I also think we should make a snack because we're going to get hungry. It might be a long journey. And then we're going to have so much fun and we're going to worship. Yes. So I think we should start worship right now. What do you think? Let's do it. All right, let's do it now. <laughs> Gonna, I'm gonna get some presents. I wanna, I wanna get some presents. Big giant box with a big giant bow. Open it up and watch it explode. Can I open them now? I can't wait for my presents. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some presents. Open it up and do it again. Can I open them now? I can't wait for my presents. But am I forgetting something? Oh, yeah. The greatest gift of all. The greatest gift of all. A baby in a manger. God's gift for one and all. Peace on earth and goodwill towards men. I know. This week on Silly Times with Handy Friends, God fulfills His promise. A long time ago, God promised the world a Savior. Finally, the time was about to come. There was a couple named Mary and Joseph who were engaged to be married. One night, an angel came to tell Mary she was going to have a baby. Hello, favored woman. Ah! What, what, who are you? Mary, don't be afraid. You have found favor with God. You will have a son and his name will be Jesus. He will be very great and he will be called the Son of the Most High. What? How can this be? By the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh. I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. Mary and Joseph had to travel from their town of Nazareth to Bethlehem after this news. As the king of the time had ordered a census, and everyone had to return to their hometown. Mary and Joseph traveled and soon it came time for the baby to be born. But there was nowhere for them to stay. Oh man, Joseph. All the hotels are booked up. There's no rooms anywhere. I'm getting so tired. 
I know, everyone is in town for the big census. What do you think, Mary? Should we take that stable that was offered to us? Yes, I think so. Let's go, it's almost time for the little baby Jesus to be born. Okay. And so, Mary and Joseph took shelter in the stable, and that is where baby Jesus was born. Meanwhile, an angel appeared to some shepherds nearby. Oh. Hello, shepherds! Ah! Who are you? Don't be afraid. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior has been born. You will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. Whoa! Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. Wow, this is amazing. I've never seen anything like this before. Let's go to Bethlehem. We must go and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. Aww. So the shepherds hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph and a baby lying in a manger. Welcome, shepherds. This is Jesus, the Savior of the world. He's been born. Whoa. We have to go tell the whole world what we saw here today. This is spectacular. The best news ever. And so the shepherds left and told everyone what they had seen. Sometime later, some wise men from the east arrived in Jerusalem looking for Jesus. Where is this newborn king of the Jews? Yeah, we saw his star rise and we have come to worship him. Let's go follow the star. Then they followed the star, which took them to Bethlehem. When they arrived, they saw Jesus and worshiped him. Look, it's King Jesus. The Savior! It really has happened. What we have heard is true. We praise you, Lord Jesus. Here are some gifts for you. Gold, frankincense, myrrh. And there you have it, the story of Christmas. We will find out more today in our Bible lesson with Mr. Mike. <laughs> children and welcome to game time we have some fun Christmas games so get ready get set let's play Aww. hey boys and girls welcome to our game today it's called Christmas, Christmas games. games that's right we have three different games we're gonna play and we have 45 seconds on the clock for each game the first game is called candy cane pick up but we can't use our hands and we have to have the candy cane in our mouths and whoever can get the most out of the dish in 45 seconds wins so vote now for who you think is going to win Jackie raise your hand kids raise your hand if Jackie's gonna win raise your hand if mr. Mike's gonna win this round okay 45 seconds on the clock in three two one go And that's the time. Let's count Aww. how many candy canes we were able to get out in 45 seconds. Mr. Mike got one, two, three, four, five. And Jackie. One. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Mr. Mike was the winner on this first game. Let's Good get job. ready for game number two. 
Welcome to our second Christmas game. We have one minute to unwrap these presents that we got for Christmas, but we can't use our little fingers. We have to put on socks first, Christmas socks on our hands. All right, first one to unwrap all three presents wins. Let's get one minute on the clock in three, two, one. I got mac and cheese too. Um. Okay, so with one minute on the clock, I opened one present. A little Christmas tree and mac and cheese. Jackie, how many presents did you open? Well, just the one. <laughs> but uh, I am hungry. All right, so I know you kids wanna know what's in this third present, so we'll show you real quick if we can even open it without our hand, without our gloves on. Here we go. Okay, the third present, just so you know, kids. Is lollipops. Ooh! Okay, me too. All right. So, Let's get ready for game number three now. Welcome to our Christmas game number three. It's called the Snowball Shovel. We have 90 seconds to use these spoons and shovel the snowballs into the Christmas tins. Now, we can't use our eyes. We have to be blindfolded because then it'll be difficult. And the most snowballs in the tin wins. And guess what? This is a double point round. So. Tell us, if you think Jackie's going to win, raise your hand. If you think Mr. Mike's going to win, raise your hand. All right, and this is a double point game, so if you win, you get two points. Let's get started. Blindfolds up. Now let's get started in three, two, one, go. This is difficult. How many do you have? I don't know, I'm not looking. I hope a hundred. I like snowballs. I'm scooping anything. I don't even know if I'm putting it in the container. <laughs> My dad used to make me help him shovel the driveway. This is harder. Time up, how did we do? Wow. Oh my goodness. Better than I thought. I didn't know I was scooping any of those. Let's count. All right, let's count. Uh, you can count first, Jackie. Okay, one, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine. One jump back. Twenty-nine. Twenty-nine for Jackie. All right, here we go. One. Two. Three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. How many did you get? Twenty-nine. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. Twenty-six. Twenty. Seven, twenty, seven! <laughs> Jackie wins, she got 29 and I only got 27 and that yes. was two points for Jackie, which means... <gasps> we tied! It's a tie, we both lose, or we both win. win. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us in our game today called Christmas Games, it was a lot of fun. We'll see you next time. Bye! Bye. Hi, I'm Mr. Mike. Today we're going to be unboxing the Bible. It's like unwrapping a new birthday present, but it's way better because it's God's Word. Today's word is... B. O. R. N. Born. Today's word comes from our Bible verse, which is Isaiah 9, 6. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Isaiah 9.6 Now, say it with me. Isaiah 9.6 For a child is born to us, a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Isaiah 9, 6. Thanks for unboxing the Bible with me today. Now get ready for a Bible lesson about the birth of baby Jesus. <laughs> hey boys and girls, welcome to our Bible story today. We are gonna be looking at the book of Isaiah. Do you know who Isaiah was? He was a prophet, which meant God used him to tell people what was going to happen. You might say it's telling of the future, but uh, Isaiah was a prophet. Now, um, if we rewind to the beginning of the Bible, who were the first two people on earth? Adam and Eve, that's right. God created Adam and Eve. And were they perfect? No, they messed up. And what do we call that mess up, that mistake? We call it sin which is going against God. Now, Adam and Eve sinned, and so God, he had a plan. He had a plan to forgive people of their sin. And do you know what that plan was? It was to send his one and only son, whose name was Jesus, that's right. And that's what we celebrate at Christmas time. But I wanna tell you about a prophecy or the future that was told through the book of Isaiah. See, God used different people to talk about the future, and we call them prophets. So there is a book called Isaiah that's kind of in the middle of the Bible, and he was going to tell about Jesus. He was going to tell about the coming Messiah, and there's a couple of times he's, he talked about Jesus' coming. One, he shared a message about God's promise to send a rescuer. He, he said, the people are living in darkness now, but they will see a great light. That was a prophecy about that great light of Jesus. And then our verse for today, which is Isaiah 9, 6, um, Isaiah wrote, this is how God will keep his promise. A child will be born for us, a son will be given to us, and the government will be on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. That's Isaiah 9, 6. So if I read you that verse and didn't tell you where it was from, you might say, oh, that's from 
you know, the New Testament where Jesus is, is born and walking on the earth. Yeah, no, this was hundreds of years before Jesus was born. This is in the Old Testament. So it was a, what's that word again? We said it a bunch of times, starts with a P. Prophecy about Jesus coming to earth. That's what Isaiah was writing about. So um, he talked about how there, this Jesus, there would be a king, he'd be a wonderful counselor, a mighty God. And so when Jesus was born, that prophecy became true. It became true. And you know what? We know that God keeps all of his promises. Did you know there's a lot of other promises in the Bible that God will be a good God, a fair God, a loving God? And his promise is that he'll be your God if you accept him. And you know what? When we see God keeping his promises, it, it encourages us that God is who he says he is, that the Bible is true, and that he loves us. I brought a few uh, things with me today. I wanted to show you. Um, they are from my ornament box. This box um, is full of ornaments that my mom and my grandma have given me uh, since I was born. And I want to share a couple of the ornaments with you. This ornament was the very first ornament I was given uh, the year I was born, in 1984. It's a train. Um, on the bottom it says Michael, which is my name, and it says 1984. And look, it's so old it even lost a couple of its wheels. But I still hang it on my tree each and every year. Isn't that cool? Here's another one. You know, my grandma and my, my mom like to paint, and so um, they would make, paint these little ornaments for me. Here's a little bear singing Christmas carols. And this was in 1998, and it said Michael, 1998, and then my grandma signed her name right there, Roberta. So isn't that cool? Okay, I got a couple more here. Let's see here. Oh, this one, I've always liked this one. This one was, 1990. How old was I? I was six years old. And my grandma gave me this little Santa shaped like a heart. Right? You see the heart? There it is. <laughs> so that's another ornament that my grandma gave me. And then guess what? In this box, I actually have one of my daughter's ornaments. Esther had an ornament made for her in 2018. Look at that little angel. Look how cute she is. So that was just three years ago. Uh, my daughter is five now, but this was her ornament from 2018. So um, now we give our kids ornaments uh, every year. So I, I brought all these ornaments just to show you that when I see these ornaments and the dates on them, it just reminds me of how much my parents and my grandparents, they love me and they want to give good things to me. And I see the, the date written on the back of these and I go, wow, my parents have loved me for a long time. And so when we see Bible stories, when we see God's love letters to us, like what he did for people and what he did for the world, oh man, it lets us know that God loves us so much. So at Christmas time, we see the, the story of Mary and Joseph and they were traveling to Bethlehem, right? And there was no room for them at the inn and so they had to stay in a stable. And guess what? They had baby Jesus. He was born in a stable and he grew up uh, perfect. He was a human and he was God and he never sinned. And guess what? He went to the cross. He died on the cross for the sins of the world. And now we're getting to the part where I, 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 I told you that God can be your God and he can also be your friend. But what do we have to do? We have to invite him into our hearts to be our Lord and to be our Savior. And you know what? God is good. He's loving. He, he doesn't do bad things. You know, the world, there's a lot of darkness in this world. A lot of bad things happen, but those bad things aren't from God. Every good and perfect gift comes from above, comes from God. So the word love, joy, happiness, um, rejoicing, all of these good things are from God. And so if God is your God and he's your friend, I think you'd want to live a joyful life, a happy life, a loving life too. Why? Because we want to be like Jesus. And Jesus was all of those things. And so I hope that this Christmas that you really search your heart and you call, you call Jesus 
your personal Lord and Savior, and that you call him friend and follow him closely this Christmas season because of all the promises and all of the things that he has done for you. All right, well, thanks for joining me in today's uh, Bible lesson on the birth of Jesus, yes, but also the prophecy from Isaiah and how amazing it is that we have a God that keeps all his promises. And what, one of those is that he loves you, so Jesus loves you. And Merry Christmas. Bye-bye. <laughs>
now we're going to very carefully break a second one, or a third sheet, in half. Okay, let's hope it breaks even. One, two, three. Ah, that never happens, but I had an extra one just in case. Actually, I didn't, I'm gonna use that one. Anyway, so now I'm going to take this graham cracker and turn it sideways so that it's two long ways going like that. And I'm gonna put some of the frosting along the bottom. Just like that. And then it will hold as glue. And I'm gonna put it on top of the bottom graham cracker. And it's gonna stick out a little bit, but that's okay. That's perfect. Let's do it again with the other one. All right, it's coming together. Now all we need is on the um, our other graham cracker, we're gonna do a U shape of frosting and put it right on top there. So let's do that now. Voila. Now this goes on the top. Now if you're a patient person, which I hope you are, or this is a good time to practice your patience, I would let this set for like 10 minutes so that the frosting it kind of dries out a little bit and it will hold together better. But let's just fast forward time and say we already waited 10 minutes and let's keep going. So now I wanna take my little manger and I'm gonna turn it towards me, or my stable I mean, and I'm gonna fill it with a light layer of frosting on the bottom. So here I'll show you guys so you can see what I'm doing. Just like this. We don't need too much, just enough to cover the bottom. I'll show you what I did there. Like that. And now we're gonna take our toasted coconut and put it all on the bottom to resemble hay. Now this part you have to be careful with because remember our, our manger's a little bit fragile at the moment. So let's get this in here. It's okay to be a little messy. Now that part's all done. So we have the manger, the stable, I mean, with the hay inside, and now let's get our little gumdrop people ready. So we need some toothpicks. I'm gonna make three people. I'm gonna make a baby Jesus, a Mary, and a Joseph. So I need three toothpicks. Now Mary and, Jesus, or Mary and Joseph are obviously taller than Jesus, so I'm gonna use, because Jesus was just a little baby, I'm gonna use three gumdrops to make them. So I'm going to pierce the gumdrop through the Q-tip all the way to the top. One, two, three. Perfect. Now I'm gonna take my scissor. This is where I'd get mom or dad to help you and I'm gonna just trim the end of that off. Great. Now I'm going to take a little sour strip thing, and I already cut this one, but I'm gonna push this one through the little top of the toothpick that's sticking out to make it look like it's little head covering. Now I'm gonna set him right here. Okay, let's make another one. Let's make a Mary. Okay, so let's see, I'll do her in, in red. All right, one last one to do. So now I'm gonna take my toothpick I'm just gonna cut it in half. One and two. All right, so now I'm gonna take this last piece. I'm gonna use a blue blankie. I'm gonna cut some of it off and stretch it out a little bit so it stays wrapped around. And then I'm just gonna take it 
and roll it around. So cute, so bundled up. Okay, now I'm gonna lay this seam side down. I think I might put a little frosting on the back just to hold it like a glue. And I'm gonna tuck them in right there. All right, now all I have to do is add the little animals. Pick your favorite kind. This one's a buffalo. I don't think that's accurate, but whatever. He can be there. Hello, little buffalo. And a hippopotamus. <laughs> like that song, I want a hippopotamus for Christmas. <laughs> All right, you guys, and there you go. There's our little graham cracker nativity. I know this took a little bit more time, but it's very fun to do with your family. Maybe everybody has a different responsibility, and you come together, you make this, and you look at it, and you think, wow, Jesus, you are amazing. Thank you for being born. We love you, and we love to snack. So I think it's time to try this. I'm gonna try this little concoction. A gumdrop with coconut and frosting. I don't, I don't know, what do you think? Mmm, sugary. All right guys, I love you, Merry Christmas, bye. <laughs>